Yeah, I, I firmly believe that. I, I did, yeah. And uh, see, uh, even if you have not been on an internship, it helps a lot if you've been on an internship because then you sold on the product. You bought the iPhone and you know how it works and you're like, whoa, this is life changing, right? Same, uh, when you bought an internship, you'll be able to sell more effectively. But a lot of experiences in your life will happen where you haven't really had a chance to experience it. So in, in those scenarios, you talk to people who've used it, and not to one people, person, but multiple people, ask them difficult questions, has it really helped you? You know, uh, and then when you completely sold on that idea, then you'll be able to sell it more effectively. I think you're saying the same thing, actually, right? <laughs> I'm just reiterating the point. And yeah, okay, like that. It's almost like, uh, although you haven't bought a, a butter, but you would recommend it sometimes. Like, he has said that uh, if somebody asks you, I have not been on exchange, although I have been, but if somebody asks me, I, I have been on an exchange, yeah. and it's like selling a laptop, like uh, somebody goes for, I would like to buy an uh, alien bit, and somebody is not having an alien bit, but still you would say that, dude, it's awesome, I would like it's like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's just convincing them that the way that it's the best thing ever in your life. Yeah, yeah for example, in my, if, if somebody was to ask me, how is the BMW 7 series? I say, yeah, I haven't driven it, but BMW is a great company. I think if you have the money, uh, you know, I think you should buy it, but do your own uh, uh, due diligence and survey. Because I can't talk intelligently about it. But if I was, uh, tomorrow I was to be a sales guy in a BMW uh, workshop, I I would make it my uh, duty to make sure for the next about three months, I'm learning as much about BMW as I can. I'm passionate about BMW. I dream about BMW. When I see a guy who's got money who can buy that BMW, I say, forget about all these six or whatever, if you are, X7, in terms of these names. BMW is the company to go in for, but I need to believe in that completely. Or you need to be smart, very strong and fast in this case. Sorry, say that again? Smart, very strong and fast. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Smart, savvy, and smart. Smart, savvy, strong and fast. Wow, shabash. Wow, nice, nice, nice. Be smart, but don't be over smart. That's that's very important, man. That's very important. Okay, Haji, or we? Haji. I want to. You had a really good time. <laughs> Excuse me. Actually, I want to ask something. That uh, we are a project of build your future. So we go to companies at. Build your what? Future. Build your future. So we, so we go to colleges and companies, and uh, in the colleges, we provide pre placement training. <coughs> Uh, so, should we, uh, like, when we go for appointment, do we, can we say that uh, you, uh, you should take, take in turns from us instead of directly contacting the companies because companies are profit oriented and they'll ask for more money? Like, I, I didn't get that, sorry. Like, What's uh, the project about? The project is actually, we go to colleges right. and they, we provide the interns to work in colleges. To work in colleges right. and provide pre placement training okay. to uh, third and fourth year, uh, third and fourth year students. So when we go for the appointment, can we the, say? Sorry, just to get it right. The interns will uh, represent the college. They will go and talk to companies and say yeah. that you should take interns. From we will be sending the interns, and those interns will be providing pre placement training to the students in the college. Okay, oh, so they will train the students, telling them that if you want to get training in a company, these are the skills you need, right? Exactly. Yes. Please explain the Soft skills. Okay, okay, okay. Soft skills, personal development. Yeah, perfect, right? Yeah, so That's a very good program. So, can we say that you should take in terms of in us instead of directly contacting the companies because companies are profit-oriented and they'll ask for more money and uh, because even we have to, uh, like, interns are also... No, I, I think this is an ethical issue. I would never ask an intern who is working with, an, with a college and their job is to train the students in their final year to be better equipped for their training, right? That's how it works. For placement. And you're saying that these interns were, if they were to contact these companies and tell them to forget about these uh, people from a college, why don't you take ISEC interns, right? Is that what you're saying? The, co the college should take ISEC interns instead of uh, contacting those companies which provide pre-placement training. Like there are some... Uh, we'll have a discussion on this separately. 
I think I need to understand this a little bit more. But just hold on to that thought. We'll, we'll have a discussion right after that. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't understand uh, completely what the proof is. So that's why I'm not giving any advice because I've not understood it. Right? So I'm not bullshitting you. Right? So that's the key thing. If I don't understand, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I've enjoyed the loss. Oh, yes, I can make that. <laughs> All right. Third thing, non uh, I need to have it. <laughs> I suggest your comments. Uh, my name is Dwight Vasala, and uh, my question, uh, which I very much wanted to ask to you, is uh, it's a kind of, I mean, it's an overall perspective that it says it's a lot of patience required, especially uh, with, the, with the kind of belief that I have is the, fa is the fact that you know you need to build up a kind of a rapport or a relationship with your uh, prospective partners and especially and then, services. Yeah, and. Uh, Especially understand the requirements and needs. I mean, in terms of, do, are they looking for some branding uh, uh, benefits or are they looking for pure services or exchange benefits and things like that? And then customize your ISIC to them. Uh, but in the process, the, as the ISIC, the kind of organization it is, it's so dynamic that we have our terms for one year and then we move on. Uh, how do how do we ensure that in this one year, looking at the kind of uh, time it requires to do an effective sales, uh, we ensure that we get the maximum out of it. Do you want to go back please? Uh, yeah, so next question. Uh, I've been out of ISEC, I've been in ISEC. These are all the points I want to talk with you guys. What are the issues? I, every year I see members. And every and I don't feel bad about it because you know that's how the whole ISEC experience is to learn, right? Uh, we are here to make the same mistakes and learn. But it's very important for new recruits and the older members to understand what a company goes through, who is meeting a vice president for the 10th time and he's a 10th new face, same Enthu Cutlet coming saying, Sir, this year we will do such a big are like, okay, again. Right? So we'll talk about that. You know, I think that's a very important point. How do you make sure that uh, if you've just got a one year term? I think that's the most beautiful thing about I say. You know there is a definite end. As an LCP, it's the most horrendous job role and it's the most beautiful job role in the world ever because you get such steep learning. But you know what makes you go through? First, the love for ISEC and that you're growing. Second is, well, on some baby. Unless you went for you know, a return. You know there is a finite ending date. But if I were to say that you were, an, you were going to be an LCP for 10 years, your perspective would be very different, right? So, I say whatever we do in terms of selling also, the fact that there is a finite ending date should help you push a little bit more. What companies do is, do is that they have annual targets. This year we want to do 3 crores of, uh, we were doing 50 lakhs last year, we will do an annual turnover of 1.5 crores, or we will do 100 billion, we will do 1 billion, whatever. Those targets are very important. Uh, but it has, I think has its own unique uh, challenges as well, and what you need to be aware of, especially when you are selling to a client who has been there for 10 years. And one of the very important things I keep on saying in all these uh, sessions is, I say guys move on, the companies don't. They are there, if they are there for long, right? There are lots of companies who have been here for 20 years, you will walk in and if that guy, the CEO is still there, he said, yeah, I, I say, yeah, I know what I say. And uh, so that's why it is extremely important, it is incumbent on anybody who goes for an exchange program, appointment or a, uh, sales appointment for anything in ISEC that you, do good justice to what you are selling, right? And you understand and do not oversell. And when you're going and selling, be aware that this guy has been in the circle, seen the guys, all that, right? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. I don't have an answer to that. Can we... Yeah, I think we'll uh, can just go back, please. Uh, by the way, quick fact, when I just looked at that sheet. Sorry, guys. Quick fact is, it is about five times more difficult to get a new client than to retain an existing client. Right? Once you know that, yes. your whole perspective on exchange especially will change. Then your focus will be, we've got 20 companies in Chandigarh. Each company is taking five interns. One company is taking 10. Chitkara takes 20 right now, we'll push it up to 100. Not just because we feel like being number one, because we'll make them see how ISEC exchange will help them. Right? You have to be genuine there. And you, the companies who are taking one or two, Try and make them see how getting more interns will help them. Of course, before that, you have to do a lot of preparation. You have to first understand if those internships really help them or not. If you go to a company who had two bad interns uh, for whatever reasons, they will not buy from you again. 
Okay. Uh, right. You're talking about mistakes to avoid. Upper IC members. Number three, not preparation. Biggest mistake you can make. Biggest mistake. Don't prepare. Don't know the name of the company. Uh, don't know the name of the executive you're going to meet. Uh, you haven't gone through the website. You haven't done prior research whether I think you taken interns from had given interns to them or not. You just walk in there and the guy says, last time you guys were here two years back, I threw you out of the office. How dare you come back again? And you're like, oh, we don't have any records of that, right? So just make sure that you're doing the preparation. And we come to the woes of ISEC where we lose all history levels. And, and for last, when I was in ISEC as well, we had something called Inside 2. I don't know what you call it right now. Where we would be Inside 1, right? And yeah, and we had that thought that every because the companies will be there, right? So if you in a company in a place like Chandigarh, you might we might have approached what 150 different institutions, including schools, NGOs, colleges, and 200, 300, 500. 500 is not a big number, right? If I had just put that information there as to the track record of that company, what was the experience, or something in gold medals, saying don't go to this company ever in your life as long as this guy is the CEO. You know, you you will have that history there intact with you. That's part of preparation. When you're going for an appointment, please make sure that you're well prepared about that. We'll cover this in more detail in the ISEC uh, cycle, not today, but in the next session. Yes, please. Uh, when you want to, to sell a project, uh, what should you uh, besides knowing about your project, it's good to know about the company you are going to introduce it. So, what the points and information that is most important to get from this company that you are going? Beautiful question. First and foremost, try and put yourself in the client's shoes. All right. I'll give you a classic example. Qblox. We don't do any business in India. All right. Uh, our all business is overseas. If today I was to come and tell us that we are having this program called uh, Global Entrepreneur, uh, but that was still relevant, uh, the, you know, it makes sense. But if there was some program like Bal Kalaka, all right, uh, even that would be relevant if we were into philanthropy, right? If we had some budget for philanthropy, it would make sense, you know, that's how you said. But if it was some program uh, which, and you were to go into the company uh, for the appointment and say that, you know, there will be 600 students there. And uh, you can target your potential uh, future employees by talking to those students. And probably tomorrow they might join your company. And my, I'm a small company. I have 35 people. And uh, minimum experience I need is five years. Uh, unless and until I do that research, I will be a fool if I were to go there and tell them that you know this will be the right target audience for you. Right? So I need to do that research beforehand. A lot of that information is available on the internet, on the website. If you have a prior uh, history of that company, or you speak with a few people and figure out what is the business model these guys have, right? then you'll be able to do that. For example, one of the biggest reasons why Chitkara as an institution is part of ISEC and it makes perfect business sense for them is because it's an educational institution. It's got young people. For Chitkara to be involved in ISEC, to give them a donation or a partnership money of 2 lakh or 3 lakh makes perfect sense because uh, you know that's what uh, they do as a business right if i was in education i said it would be my first love still is but uh, you know i would i would want to sponsor more of isec events because i need that brand awareness but if uh, as a company i would know business in india i am not looking at mass hiring uh, and i'm an isec member i'll be fooled to go there and tell them these same points uh, that you know your brand will be, your big banner will be placed of cube blocks uh, in front of there and then you'll get that visibility. So that means you haven't done your homework. So to answer your question, if you're selling a project, then you have to do all the groundwork again. You have to go to the website, try and talk to more people, uh, try and understand the requirement. If you do not have those facts right with you, then make sure that during the conversation with the executive of that company, just ask them, do you think this program would be of help to you? Will this help you anyway? If the guy says, that, yeah, 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 we were looking at expanding into colleges and you've got 600 students from colleges all over Punjab, this is perfect. How much money do you need? 20,000? I'll give you 18, uh, 25, whatever. So, uh, you know, then it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense if the, uh, the company doesn't need those services. Did I answer your question? 
So there's no magic stick to do research. You have to do the discipline 